Hello, and welcome to AIC Vision, a weekly news program. I'm Katherine Anderson. AIC Vision is produced by the Alternative Information Center, a joint Palestinian-Israeli organization in Beit Sehur and Jerusalem. This week, one of the most high-profile criminal cases from Israel's 2008-2009 Operation Cast Lead military attack on the Gaza Strip came to an end. On Sunday, a Jaffa military court approved a plea bargain reached between the prosecution and Staff Sergeant S, a Gavati Brigade soldier who was indicted in 2010 for shooting and killing 64-year-old Raya Abu Hijaj and her 35-year-old daughter, Majda Abu Hijaj. The Israeli soldier, charged with killing the two women, will serve 45 days in military prison for illegal use of a weapon. Israeli spokespeople claim that given great discrepancies between the accounts of Israeli soldiers and Palestinian eyewitnesses, it was not possible to find the soldier guilty of the killings. The Karim Abu Salem border crossing in Egypt and the Egyptian Gaza border opened on Wednesday allowing goods into the Gaza Strip. Aid for trade, agricultural, and transportation sectors of the Gaza economy entered the Strip. Egyptian authorities have promised to open the border crossing for the Eid al-Fatir holiday, expected to begin this weekend. The Gaza Strip has been under an Israeli enforced blockade since Hamas won elections in 2006. Egypt recently closed its border with Gaza with the Gaza Strip after gunmen killed 16 Egyptian border guards in Sinai on Sunday, August 5th. The Hamas government and Egypt will establish a joint committee to investigate the Sinai attacks. Hundreds of demonstrators have attended anti-wall and settlement protests during what some have described as the hottest Ramadan in memory. Throughout Ramadan, when Muslims fast during the day, protests have been organized in five towns. Kufr Kadum, in the Northern West Bank, Bil Ein, Nil Ein, and Nabi Salah in the Central West Bank, and Al Masara in the Southern West Bank. Israeli soldiers have retaliated to anti wall marches by Palestinians, Israelis, and internationals with arrests, tear gas, rubber coated steel bullets, shot grenades, and water cannons infused with skunk water. Protesters have chanted slogans calling for the removal of the wall liberation of Palestinian political prisoners, and an end to Israel's occupation. Some demonstrators threw rocks over the wall or at armed military vehicles. August 17th is the final Friday of Ramadan. At no time is the necessity of the scarce resource of water in the occupied Palestinian territory felt more acutely than in the summer. Johanna Montanari and Daniel Veyand explore this issue in the West Bank summer of 2012. There are three or four uh, wells here and around the Bethlehem area uh, that provides water to the all the government of, of Bethlehem. The settlers around the, the Bethlehem area uh, take the majority of the, the water all the, the Palestinians in the West Bank, and including the, the camps, have the containers above the, the, the roofs of the, the houses. Yeah, because the houses are very old and uh, the building is very old, they, they couldn't put the containers, 20 or 30 containers above the roof. Some people, uh, they can't manage. And for instance, suppose you have a very big family, suppose you have uh, ten uh, children in the house. How you try to manage and get things, it is very hard. You have to be economize or to minimize your own consumption of water to the probably to the least amount of daily needs. Because we have uh, problems in uh, water pipes, we have uh, problems in uh, how, uh, how water is pumped to each house and to each family. Sometimes you need to wait for three weeks, probably. The minimum three weeks you have to wait. Uh, the problem, it will still exist uh, until we 
get our rights to control our uh, wells of, of, of Bethlehem area. Uh, we need that, we are, feel that we are running our own matters, not, not, uh, we are, uh, we are uh, helpless, yani. we are in, uh, so we're here at Bustan Karaka, a permacultural farm in Beit Sahur near Bethlehem in the West Bank. Bustan Karaka is a permacultural farm which tries to deal with water shortages in this area. Um, this is a very dry area where there's very little rainfall um, and all of the infrastructure and therefore all of the access to water is controlled by the Israeli authorities and used for the benefit of Israeli people and the Israeli settlers, not the local Palestinians. So the key for dealing with this water insecurity is um, rainwater harvesting and water conservation. Uh, down in this wadi next to the farm, we've built artificial mounds of earth called swales, which we use to gather water in the winter. We've only been doing this for four or five years, and you can already see a noticeable change in the quality between the topsoil and the lower layers of soil. Uh, the topsoil is a lot darker, a lot richer, and a lot more fertile. Before Boston was built, this valley was completely dead, but now you can see those different kinds of trees um, and plants uh, are flourishing in the valley. So we share and promote all the technologies and techniques that are successful here in Bustan Karaka with the local community. We've built cisterns for people and taught them to irrigate and farm their land sustainably and it has the effect of being better for the environment and making people really independent of the occupation so that they don't depend on the occupation's water resources, uh, they have access to all their own resources and they can farm and live independently. Uh, we hope that we will reach this this point. As we will reach that point, uh, and that the Palestinian could uh, live in a dignity in an independence situation. I myself, I think the next war will be about water. Because uh, wherever you go, you will find that each nation, each country uh, tries to secure and get water for its people. And the uh, economy, uh, all, all economies of the world, they depend on water. Uh, water is life. And finally, to the Middle East. The Palestinian issue and Israeli-Palestinian conflict seem to have disappeared from the Western diplomatic agenda and mainstream news. Palestinian analyst and writer Nassar Ibrahim explores why this is and what developments we can expect in the coming months. Uh, when we are uh, looking around us, we will find the situation, it seems, uh, very calm in some way. There is no political initiatives. Uh, the conciliation between Fatah and Hamas is uh, frozen. And uh, the Israeli policies from the other side is going on on the ground regarding the settlements. Uh, we are refusing to freeze the settlement. And uh, all the parties who are uh, uh, announcing daily nightly that they are supporting the peace process and to restart the negotiation between the Palestinian and the Israelis is also stopped, which raises the question why? What's happening? Uh, why the situation is in this uh, case? I think uh, all of the parties, the Palestinians, the Israelis, the Americans, the Europeans, uh, their eyes now not uh, concentrate on the Palestinian-Israeli conflict. Uh, all of them, they are waiting what's going on around, especially in Syria and Egypt. And uh, for that, they are waiting uh, what the results of the change which taken by the uh, Egyptian uh, president, Ahmed Morsi, uh, regard the confrontation with the extremists in Sinai, and also regard the change in the military council uh, in Egypt. And uh, based on that, uh, all of the parties, especially Israel and America, they are waiting to see what's the policies of the uh, Egyptian president regarding the relation with Israel, regarding the, the Camp David agreement. For that, they are waiting. What's, what's happening? Or, uh, 
And I can say in this regard that uh, all the negotiation between Fatah and Hamas is stopped because Egypt is busy with its internal uh, situation. This from one side. From the other side, uh, the, the, the events in Syria also is crucial. And we know how uh, this confrontation uh, starts to be like a war. The American alliance, which means the Gulf countries, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, will succeed to collapse the regime and to crush one main uh, circle in the resistance chain. And then uh, Syria will be as a state under the control of the Islamist and the Muslim Brotherhood as a main power in Syria, supported by the Gulf countries, and it will raise the flag of the Western Alliance. Or the regime will succeed to crush the militant groups uh, who uh, are trying to pull up the regime since one and a half years ago. Uh, for that, I think Hamas and the Palestinian uh, they haven't to do anything regarding these big issues because this, the result or the, the processes of these events is not in the hands of the Palestinians. For that, they are almost keeping silence. <coughs> and uh, the Palestinian PA and Ramallah, they are saying, we can't say we are with the regime or against the regime. Hamas is saying we can recognize that Syria supported us in the past, but now we know the Syrian people have needs we must meet them, but in their mind is not the Syrian people. They are waiting if their branch, the Muslim Brotherhood in Syria, will succeed to win the battle against the regime that will change all the balances of power in the region. That means uh, the Muslim Brotherhood who win the election in Tunisia and in Egypt and in, in uh, they are strong in Libya and they are the strongest party in Jordan and if they will win uh, in Syria, that means Hamas will be backed by a very strong power. And that will put the USA and the Western country in front of a new era in the region, how to rebuild their alliance with the coming power, the Muslim Brotherhood. And uh, in this gray uh, period, gray period in the regard the result, but the confrontation is clear between whom and who. Uh, but uh, there is no clear uh, picture to say we can, based on the result, to move on this direction. And I think the situation in Palestine will be will move uh, more stronger and more dynamic if the situation will be more clear in the region. And uh, if America will won in this confrontation who supported by uh, the Gulf countries and Turkey. Uh, I think they will manage to put more pressure on the Palestinian level in order to push the peace process forward based, based on the Israeli condition. Because the American, they succeed to present the, the danger is not Israel. The, the first danger is not Israel, regarding the Gulf countries and the Arab countries. It's Iran. Iran is the danger. For that, they are trying to mobilize all the, the parties, all the people, to orient their pressure against Iran. Uh, anyway, anyway, uh, I, I am not seeing now, uh, in the coming months, any dramatic change in the Palestinian uh, situation. Uh, it will continue. The relation between Hamas and Fatah, as I predict, predicted before months, I will say they will not do anything on the ground. They are saying, all of them, we are uh, with the negotiation, with the, we are with the conciliation, the Palestinian, but practically they are continuing their policies on the ground. Fatah is putting pressure against Hamas and Hamas is putting pressure against Fatah, and they are arresting members from each uh, side. This was AIC Vision. I'm Catherine Anderson, broadcasting from Jerusalem. Thank you for joining us.